But there's a hitch. The ancient ship is leaking like a sieve. Water's getting into places it shouldn't. In particular, the dry tanks where the 22 bombs will be placed. And water and explosives don't mix. We have engine spaces that we need uh, to put explosive charges in. With an old ship like this, the tanks are leaking through the pipes. So a lot of the water's going into the engine room spaces. We have to pump that out before the explosives go on board. So we need to keep these spaces real dry. With the ship drying out, the bomb squad can move in. Laying the detonation cord, or det cord, through this maze of corridors is a treacherous job. Aircraft carriers are, you know, the biggest ships we got. You think you can go one way, you know, you think you're going starboard, and then all of a sudden you get turned around and you're going port. It takes 10 miles of detonation cord to connect the 22 bombs to the control panel. Yeah, sometimes. The most important thing for us with dead cord is uh, the route. We want to make sure that uh, we don't kink it or cross over other charges or other dead cord. The detonation cords all lead to one place, this boat on the flight deck. It's here that the electronics that control the ignition of the bombs will be housed. The 45-foot boat is strapped down to the deck, but will release and float away while the aircraft carrier sinks beneath it. This actually turns on the firing system, fires the firing system, and also functions the cable cutters that cut this whole vessel away from the ship as it sinks. There is a duplicate over on the support vessel. Basically what we have is a brake wire around each charge, and as each charge detonates, we'll get an indication here. We record it down here instantaneously, and then it's transmitted back to the support vessel for verification. Today, the number one thing is safety. We've got this entire ship rigged with explosives and with military debt cord. That's the stuff right here. Kind of green, kind of smooth. Nobody goes below the hangar deck without an escort because we have all of our charges in place and they're all attached to their debt cords. The worst could, could happen would be an uncommanded detonation. If you happen to disturb it, Pull it, snag it, just let me know, and we'll, we'll take a look at it. I cannot stress it enough. You know, we do not want to have an accident, and these kind of accidents kill. The stakes are high. Alongside the bomb squad, workers rush to complete any last-minute cleanups. An uneasy situation. One step in the wrong place could trigger the explosives. The ship would sink at the dock, and lives could be lost. Yeah. The closer we get to the end here, probably the more dangerous it gets because now we're opening every access that we created for the, for the sink. So there's holes everywhere. There's every hatch is removed. Uh, there's holes in the deck, holes in the bulkhead. Uh, deck plates are gone, uh, which is all planned and supposed to be that way, but it gets hazardous. Gutted clean and wired to blow, there's only one thing left to do. Yeah, let's go take an aircraft carrier. Loaded with explosives, the mighty O is cut loose from her moorings. The Oriskany leaves port for the very last time. Uh, the demolition team stay on board. They'll monitor any holes covered by temporary steel patches and are ready to man the pumps if the ship starts to take on water. It's an old ship, and, and look at her. After all the gutting we've done, she's still tough. Uh. An armada of tugs takes up position in case the aircraft carrier breaks free from her tow lines. The countdown to zero hour has begun. Now, 25 miles offshore, the Oriskany nears her final resting place in the Gulf of Mexico. 
NES uh, Harbor Security. This is Alpha Tango. How copy over? This is Harbor Security. Reach out, clear over. Just want to re-clarify, we need a 1,250-foot arc from any point on the Oriskany today. Uh, roger, sir. We'll maintain a 1,250. Harbor security, semi-7.0. Uh, roger. Under agreement with the state of Florida, the aircraft carrier must be sunk upright and on a very precise set of coordinates. The tugboats carefully maneuver the mighty O to a buoy that marks the spot. How far away are we, Robert? 150 feet forward, forward. Ranger, we're about 350 feet off. Hey, when it gets close, Frank, give that uh, tugboat here a hard port, and that'll swing the bow over there and get right where you want it. To make sure the ship stays precisely over the target, the four massive anchors will be deployed. This is the starboard anchor chain, which is connected up above to the island. From here, we're gonna have approximately 100 tons of chain and anchor that's gonna hold the ship offshore. And this will be the first and most major chain and anchor that we're gonna deploy. The ship's anchor was normally three inch chain. We brought three and three eighth chain. And the original ship's anchors were like 25,000 pounds. We brought 30,000 pounds to keep the ship in one place. We only have one time deployment. Once we cut our cable, we cannot retrieve it. We cannot bring it in. We cannot shorten it. We cannot lengthen it. We have one shot, and this is the only shot that we have to deploy nearly 100 tons of chain per leg of anchor. We're on site. We're on site. Okay, cut it. They're exactly in position. Flash the anchor. Flash the anchor. Anchor's gone. Last anchors in the water. To ensure the ship floods evenly, there are still a few last holes to be cut. Once these sections of the hull are opened up, there's nothing to stop her from sinking. We cut the six by six holes on the side of the ship so that when it comes down to that level, the water will flow in and make the ship sink fast. Yeah. We're done. It's you guys' job. We're we finished. got her. We're standing we got it. Go blow it up. Tomorrow, after her very last night at sea, the Oriskany goes to the bottom. Next morning, and as the countdown approaches, the demolition team hurriedly move out. This is the sink day we're doing it. We're cleared off the rest of our equipment and then get ourselves off so that when they arm the explosives, we're crazy, but we're not that crazy to stay here. The final job on board is to mount video cameras to capture the explosions. To film the Oriskany sinking from inside the ship, cameras are mounted on the hangar deck. It's been pretty smooth since we've been out here and I expect it's gonna remain that way. Uh, the weather looks good, but anything can happen, you know, anything can happen. Final systems are checked and rechecked before the green light to start the countdown is lit. Security is tight and all ships are kept outside a one mile exclusion zone. Oh my God, the, way out here. the bomb squad rolls out the final lines of detonation core. The charges are set. The Oriskany is once again armed and dangerous. After years of planning and preparation, the USS Oriskany is seconds from becoming the largest artificial reef in the world. 
Kelly, you copy? Hey, Troy. The charges have blown successfully, but will the mighty O sink straight and level as planned, or will she go down fighting? This is really, really strange. <laughs> strange? Oh yeah, to see her do this. I mean, just uh, eerie. She's taking on a lot of water right now. A lot of water. It appears that she's uh, just about to the third deck right now. But there's a problem. The ship is leaning to one side. You're seeing the whole of the flight deck. What's gonna happen is the house is gonna help to start writing it once it goes down. The only problem is right now it's a little bit too much. I could roll on her side. Baby girl, do what she's supposed to do. She'll level out. She'll level out. She's gonna do it her way. Come on, baby, roll back over again. Roll back over. Level it up. In this spectacular footage from the hangar deck camera, a wall of water engulfs the ship. Only 37 minutes after detonation, the mighty O succumbs to the sea and slips beneath the waves. She's starting to right herself. It's coming back around again. Boom, it's going to hit the bottom. There she goes, yeah! All right. Well done, well, well done, done son. The cheers are premature. For the job to be successful, Ariscany must be sitting upright on the seabed. And the only way to find out for sure is to dive on the site and inspect the ship. She's sitting upright in 65 meters of water and perfectly positioned. The mission is a success. From her launch at the end of World War II, she's given over 30 years of valiant service, surviving Korea and Vietnam. Now the USS Ariscany can finally lay at rest. She was once one of the deadliest killers afloat. Now this huge piece of military hardware will become home to a vast array of sponges and coral, providing a playground for thousands of divers. Even at the end of her career, the Ariscany is still serving. This time, as the last